Right here, welcome engineering graphics and design learners. This specific video is part of the How to Hack Your Pet series only on How to EGD for Grade 12 learners doing the civil pet. And in this video, I'm going to be zooming in on this very first part of the presentation requirements, which refers to the design brief as well as your specifications, your constraints, and your management plan. So all of this I'll be discussing in this video, and it's going to give you some direction to make sure you understand exactly what is required. Now, of course, this part here goes with a couple of documents. It also goes with the design brief and the requirements specified within your checklist. Please, the importance of this is critical that you keep to this checklist because that is exactly what they will be marking. Secondly, is your pace setter that again details when and how this needs to be handed in. There's of course a download in the description. All right, and then the last part of this is the actual pad document that details the scenario. So these documents are all what you require to make sure you understand. So let's start off before we show you some practical tips and examples. Before we start, let's just first read together. Right. So, for you, you need to present. That is the presentation requirements. It's for you to pre represent. Remember, you are presenting your design solution to a client. And so, what is required in that? In the very first part, number one, you need to analyze the given scenario. And this given scenario is, of course, this document here that says scenario. You have to analyze it. We'll do it now shortly. And then you have to formulate a design brief. Okay, this design brief needs to be done in two paragraphs. The first paragraph here is going to be labeled 1.1. And if you look at your checklist, there you go. If you look at your paid checklist, there it is. Number 1.1 is the first paragraph that gives a background and comprehensive description of what is to be designed. So let's look at what does that fully mean. At 1.1, right there. The first paragraph must be in your own words, people, in your own words, you cannot copy your friends or you cannot copy just the scenario as given. And in your own words, you need to give a brief background to this project. Okay. A brief summary background to this project, as well as a detailed description of what has to be designed. Okay. That's in your first paragraph. Your second paragraph is 1.2. Okay. And it refers to your checklist here. Second paragraph, your role and description of the design process you are going to follow. So if you look here, the second paragraph must again be in your own words. Give a clear overview of your role. That is very important here. Your role in this project, as well as a description of the complete design process, and I'll help you with that, that you are going to implement to complete this path. So these are the first two points. Let's look at the first one. This paragraph gives a brief background of, and a detailed description of what has to be designed. If we look at your scenario, okay, it's actually you taking this introduction here, maybe the first two paragraphs, we'll read it through now in a moment, but these first two paragraphs, putting them across in your own words, detailing as an overview what is going to be designed. And we know this, that by now, it is a proposed new conference center that you will have to design. So you're going to set these first three paragraphs in your own words. The next part of it asks us to give a clear overview of your role, as well as a description of the complete design process. So for this paragraph, your wording is going to sound something like, my role in this project is to, all right, come up with a design solution for a new proposed, for the new proposed conference. And to do that, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to analyze the scenario. I'm going to come up with a list of specifications and constraints. I'm going to have to do research on these topics. Then I'm going to go and do two concept designs. I'm going to evaluate them. Once I've decided on the final design, I'm going to do my floor plan. Then my elevations, after that, I'll have to do site plan in the end, two-point perspective, and put it all together in a proposal. Something si simple like that is going to give a description of the complete process. In other words, from the design brief to the actual final drawings, what your process is going to be like. 
includes the research, the designing, the actual drawings. And your role here is you're an architect and you have to come up with a solution. So these two paragraphs, people, it's not an essay. It's only a paragraph. So it shouldn't be much more. If you look at this, you know, it's about the first paragraph, similar in length like this, and also the second paragraph. So really an overview in your own words. It's not an essay. And I'll give you some more direction in that regard in a the, in the moment. Then the next part of this, and this is now 1.3 on your checklist. If you look at the checklist here, 1.3 is 20 given specifications. 1.4 is your possible constraints. So 1.3, and I, I'd like to number it here, then I know I'm aligning it with my checklist. 1.3, a list of 20, at least 20, given specifications for the building. Now we're going to read that together now. It's all to be found in this document. The second part, the five possible constraints, and that these constraints, um, uh, that the specifications that you have listed may not be repeated or reworded as possible constraints. So you're actually going to have to find about 25, this 20 plus this five, specifications and constraints because you can't repeat you can't go and write the specification in negative to come up with a constraint so the tip is going to be here to actually come up with your constraints first and the rest of these specifications to list them then to make up your 20s i'll talk you through that in a moment and then the last thing is a management plan that specifies target dates for the completion of each of these presentation requirements and it's very much similar that management plan to this plan which i've already discussed in the previous video you can of course have a look at this but please come up with your own there's a due date so make sure you have that column and the actual date column in there these are the different components that needs to be uh, completed so something like this would be your management plan and uh, we'll talk about that now for now let's look at just a talk through the actual design scenario, the uh, scenario that was given, and let's see what we come up with here. All right, so let's look together. All right, your clients appeal to the local municipality to revoke the subdivision of stand 71 from two stands, 71A and 71B, to a single stand has been successful. People, that's a big introduction there, one sentence, and all it's doing is it's telling us that the approval here, where the, these two stands were separate initially, stand 71A, 71B, they've now been consolidated in one stand 71. Does that really make a difference for you? No, it's not honestly part of something to consider even. The only thing that you need to remember is you now have space to build this building or design it. The intention to build a new conference center on this seven, stand 71 can now go ahead as planned as it would attract, what's the purpose of this? They want to attract more business to what? The existing bed and breakfast facility. There's an existing bed and breakfast facility on the stand and it is indicated. You have been tasked by your client to submit, and this is what do I have to submit, a design solution for the proposed new conference center. People, that means in the end of this, you are going to submit an entire document. Sorry, it's a bit zoomed out here. But this document will have all the different parts of this pad in it. A complete design solution. All right. The proposed new conference center will simply be referred to as the building in the project from now on. All right. Let's have a look here. The building which must have the capacity to cater for a mix maximum of 65 delegates. So here we're starting now. That is the first specification. Must have a capacity of 65 at a time must be single story must be a brick structure must also cater for people with disabilities you see how quickly we've stacked up one two three four five already to match the design of the existing bed and breakfast facility so it must match the design of the existing bed and breakfast facility what the roof must be a dutch gable design again very clear can't deviate from that it's actually almost a constraint and it must have an ibr roof sheet finish again it, that can be either a specification or a constraint you can't use tiles it's constraining you from using tiles must also include fascia boards gutters and rainwater downpipes the building must incorporate either an inner or 
an outer curved wall. You don't have to do both of them. Either inner or an outer curved wall. Again, specification. And what? It must be a prominent feature. So it must be clearly visible for you as you enter or, or approach this building. Now, look here. There's a main entrance. And what about it? It must be north-facing and consist of a rotating door. That's another one. That has a single glass and aluminium swing door on either side. Also specification. Directly outside and in front of the rotating door must be what? A covered drive through that is wide enough to accommodate two motor vehicles. Okay? Side by side for the dropping off and collecting of delegates. So it's a drop off area and a collecting area. The roof cover for this drive through must be an extension of the Dutch cable roof design. So there needs to be a covered drop off area and that roof is an extension of that Dutch cable roof design, okay? The main entrance must lead into a large open space concourse, okay? So if I enter into the building, there's a large open space receiving me that's within the building with a floor area of no less than 110 square meters. This concourse will be utilized for what? Plenary sessions, entertainment and dining purposes and must have a built-in reception desk. This is a specification near the main entrance. So they even specify the placement must be near the main entrance. Leading off the concourse must be a small kitchen of approximately 10 square meters, which will be used for catering purposes. The kitchen must have a single sink, built-in cupboards, sufficient work surface to prepare food. So work surfaces to prepare food as well as space for a refrigerator and a stove. There must also be built-in serving counters in the concourse situated near the entrance to the kitchen. Again, where is it situated? Near the entrance. Very detailed um, specifications for you. Leading off the concourse must also be three similar sized meeting rooms that can accommodate up to 15 delegates, each with a floor area of no larger than 36 square meters, as well as two similar sized but smaller meeting rooms, so two smaller ones, so we've got two bigger ones, two smaller ones, Smaller meeting rooms, each with a floor area of no larger than 24 square meters. The two smaller rooms, what about them, must be adjacent to each other with a retractable wall divider, almost like a stacking door, folding door, between them so that it can be opened to form a single larger room. Okay, so uh, it's going to, from 24 square meter, two rooms next to each other can open up to 48 that will be able to accommodate up to 20 delegates. Each of the rooms must have a door that isolates it from the concourse. So can I close it? I must be able to close the door uh, that goes into the concourse and I must still have an emergency exit door to the outside of this building. Okay, there's one more page here. Okay, in conclusion, there must be a male and female toilet facility accessible from inside this building. Okay, that's the placement here is inside. The male toilet must have two separate toilets, three wall-mounted urinals, and two hand wash basins. The female facility must have three separate toilet facilities, three hand wash basins. There must also be a separate toilet facility with a toilet and a hand wash basin for disabled. The building must have sufficient electrical lighting and switch socket outlets in all the rooms and areas, so you can come up with that yourself, but it must be sufficient electrical lighting, switch sockets, all the rooms and areas, as well as a large window to let in, as well as large windows to let in sufficient natural light. All sewer and wastewater from the building must be connected to the manhole on the municipal sewer line. We look at that now. Included in the design must be a parking area. So, oh, remember the parking area with 12 standard parking bays and two parking bays for the disabled, situated again close to the building. A couple of times that they have emphasized the placement. The total area of the building, excluding the drive through may not exceed 320. People, there is a lot of specifications, many more than your 20 that need it. Okay, so first of all, what you're going to do, just rough, somewhere on a rough page, you're going to start off, I say, with your constraints. Okay? And you're going to list five constraints. Just first of all, do this rough. Five constraints. Things that is restrictive. Things like it is a, it must be a single story building. So you're constrained. You cannot have a double story. Things like the roof finishes, etc. Okay. So you come up with five constraints. Things that actually constrain you, hinders you, limits you. Then you do another list 
And people, I honestly want to encourage you to do specifications. To do this rough and do this completely. Because if you fully understand this, you're going to be able to design correctly. How you understand these specifications is going to help you get this right. Now, if I look at this through this document, there's a couple of things that specified here. This actual um, building, all right, it talks about the bricks, the roof, etc. But you can also look at the concourse. So you have, um, let's say, the drop off area. That's one part, and it will have certain specifications. And you can remember there are things like two cars next to each other. Um, the, it must have a roof cover over it, etc. So come up with your specifications in groupings. The drop-off area, then the concourse, it's got its own specifications. They talk about the reception desk, they talk about um, uh, uh, entertainment areas. Uh, in this concord, there can be a subdivision for your kitchen with its list again. All right, so that's how you compile this list. If you get out of the kitchen, then there is the, the three um, larger meeting rooms, okay? And each one of them have their specifications. Then there's the two smaller ones. So you'll do another bullet, two smaller meeting rooms, Okay. Not writing that out. And then you have the toilets. Okay, so you can see here that you can very quickly come up with a specification that's not just a list of da -da 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 answers, but actually grouping them helps you gain understanding of this path. And it helps you when you get to your design to know exactly how to proceed. So let me give you just one or two more specific tips in this regard. Okay, here's an example. It's unfortunately Afrikaans. But just to show you how this layout can look. You've got your design brief on top. Then you have 1.1 and it is the background. 1.2 is your role in this design process. Then you have your specifications and you can group them again like I've just said. You have, in this case, this was a media center with its requirements. A kitchen with its requirements. So you can, yours will look differently but it can give you your understanding of the sub areas. And then lastly, you have your constraints with your five constraints. Okay, so take the nearest time to make sure you do this. And really, I want to encourage you, put a border around it. It's going to help you tidy this up and really let it look very neat for your actual submission. The last part of this was the management plan. And here is another example. It's similar to the pace setter that I've given you that you all have had a look at already. Okay, but you can come up with your own management plan with your own dates and your actual dates. And this is going to be one complete page that is dedicated to this. So please don't rush it. Make sure it's clearly labeled also. Okay, let's look at just the checklist here because everything needs to be aligned with your actual checklist. Okay, so you're going to use this again for yourself. The first paragraph, background and comprehensive description of what is to be designed in your own words. Second paragraph, your role, and again, the description of the process that you're going to follow. Then your 20 specifications from the scenario, your five possible constraints. And the last one is the management plan that must include all the presentation requirements with its target dates. If you get all of this right, you're going to be able to go two, 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 and you are going to get 10 out of 10 for this first part of your pet for this year. All right, go hack your pet. Now it's your turn.